Hi everybody. So I'm back with my Ludwig Black Sparkle Legacy Maple Kit and I'm about to tune them up and get them set up and I wanted to share that with you. I've gotten a lot of requests to do tuning videos and I figure this is a good opportunity. And um, I'm just going to go as I normally would through the process which is not very scientific at all. It's just mostly tuning by ear of course and feel. Um, since this kit is brand new to me, I don't have a sense yet for the um, kind of like the feel, you know, the sound and the feel of it combined when tuning. So I have literally not touched these drums since I made the uh, unboxing a few days ago, you know, with the holidays and everything. I just kind of um, put it to the side and decided I was going to wait until I had time to actually make a video of the tuning and setup. So the only thing I did was I took the stock heads off the bass drum and I have the front head here and I'm actually going to make uh, what I call the bottom disc which is what I think he used as a, a muffler which is just a cut out piece from another head and glue it into the center like so. Um, and I plan to do that but the problem is it's cold here in Chicago now and I can't really do this outside and I, I literally have no room to be spraying adhesive on a drum head um, at least without it over spraying somewhere and I don't really want to do that in the house so I decided to put that off for a little bit and I'm actually going to use this ebony um, front head and my idea with this is to get a PFOZ decal, get a logo, and put it on the front at some point soon. So I'm going to order that. So that this is going to be the Rezo head for a while. And this is just a simple um, ebony smooth black head. There's no sound control ring or anything like that. And for the batter side, I actually have just a standard Remo Ambassador, which I'm going to put on first. I have a, a felt strip, and this is a 3-inch felt strip. I like using the wider felt strip because I think it does a better job of muffling. Plus, this one, I believe, is wool. Yeah, it's, it's natural. And I really like the um, effect that it has on the bass drum. I have this on my 26 inch thermogloss and I also have one on the 24 inch gold sparkle. So um, for this bass drum I'm gonna put it let's see just above the second set of lugs at the bottom. So uh, get the head in place so that I'm ready to uh, secure the strip with it. Just taking a look to make sure that it's fairly level um, and I pull it kind of snug, make sure the bass drum head gets seated in place. There's plenty of spin on this drum edge for the head, so that's good. It'll resonate nice and um, clearly. All right, so grab a hoop. And it doesn't matter which hoops I use at this point because I haven't attached a bass drum pedal yet. So let me just see where the seam is. There we go. There should be two seams. Okay. So I'm going to put the seams kind of toward the, uh, the bottom where the felt strip is. I'm going to see if I can actually align them with tension rods. Yeah, I can. So I'm going to cover the seams with T-rods. So I'm going to put these in place. And then I'm going to hand tighten them to the point where they make contact with the hoop 
but don't really come down at all. And of course the drum key tension rods will go on the very bottom. And this is the longest process getting the bass drum heads on, so I'll skip forward through some of these parts until it comes to the actual tuning part. Okay, so this is the last tension rod on the batter side. And I'm just tightening it to where it makes contact and then I go a little further and I'm going to start going around the drum a couple turns at a time. This is definitely looser than just a couple. So this is two turns now. Pretty much two turns with each one. Then I push down to get the collar stretched out a bit. Actually, I'm going to pull this felt strip a little tighter because it's got a little slack in the middle. So I'm going to loosen, loosen up the bottom rods. There we go. That's better. Get these back in contact. And now I'll just go around the drum and tap just to see what kind of tone I've got. I'm going to go one turn at a time at this point. These are looser. Tighten these up. I like to always make sure that this part of the drum is tighter because the beater is not hitting exactly in the middle, it's a little closer and I don't like there to be any sound of a wrinkle, especially where the beater is coming in contact with the head in this, in this area. I mean really I don't like that in any area, but particularly here I want this to be maybe even just a little tighter than the rest of the head. Now I'm going to go another half turn. So right now it feels like it's properly tensioned all around. It may be a bit uneven and I'll do more fine tuning with it, but that feels pretty good to me right now. So I'll flip it and put the rezzo side on. Just make sure it's aligned with the badge, smack dab in the middle, and same thing with the inlay strips here, I'm going to align them with the tension rods. Okay, I'll start with the, the bottoms which are drum key type tension rods. Okay, now it's time to go all around. So I'll time lapse this part. Okay, and this is the last one. that I'm placing in before getting it a little more fine-tuned. Get at these bottom ones here. On the front head, I always make tighter than the batter side, and often it's significantly tighter, which is pretty standard knowledge and practice amongst Bonham fanatics and which is actually most of you know this but 
for those that don't. This is just a very typical big band, old school bass drum tuning. Um, there are all kinds of things, of course, you could put inside if you wanted to. You could even put a felt strip in the front. I actually like the sound of that a lot. I don't often do it. Basically, I never do it. I have maybe one bass drum that I do it with, um, you know, for gigs. It's like a 18 inch bass drum uh, for jazz gigs. But for the most part, whenever I'm tuning up bigger drums, I leave the front head either completely unmuffled or lately I've tried this, uh, the disc in the middle of the head, which I was referring to earlier as what I think was Bonham's method based on the photographs and how it looked to me. It looks like the opposite of a Ritchie ring or of a, you know, power stroke type thing. So, um, yeah, uh, otherwise I also keep shredded newspaper, maybe like about this much, <laughs> uh, in the bottom of my thermal gloss bass drum, and I really like the sound of that as well. So I thought about doing that with this, but first I want to just start out with the open sound of the drum as it is and then kind of you know get to know this drum what the nature of it is the kind of like the the tone of it and the sustain and all of that kind of stuff and then go from there but this is sort of a first step trial run with this black bass drum head i thought it would look real cool actually with the black sparkle but now i think it might be a little severe or like too much of the black you know because it's it's pretty shiny and it's dark. So I hope it doesn't take away from the finish of the drums. Actually, uh, I'd be curious to hear what, what your opinion is on this out there. So, um, but like I said, I, I intend to get a decal for the people's front of Zeppelin. I'm just putting more and more fingerprints on this thing too. So let's see where we're at with this. That's got a wrinkle, not anymore. So now I'm going half turn and then to fine tune this I'm probably going to I don't always have to have these flush with the hoop like oftentimes you know they'll be um, on an angle wherever it feels right to me bit of a wrinkle there yeah you can hear this head cracking as it gets seated now from this point, this is all just by ear and feel. It's like a, a touch thing and also the sound, if it sounds pleasing to me. Like the overtones aren't too clashing too much. This is sounding good. But of course, I have to stand it up and get, get a feel for the sound. tighter all around because I can hear it crackling still as it gets seated. Now one thing I've said before about tuning is I routinely make adjustments to the tuning of my drums wherever I'm playing so it depends on if it's a small room, a nightclub, a restaurant, a concert hall, if there's a lot of hard surfaces, if there's carpeting, um, if it's wood, if there's a lot of glass, you know, all those things really affect the sound and make you, um, you know, they influence how you hear your drums in a space. So I don't ever really just tune and then leave it. Like, you know, if I took these to a gig and it's in a concert hall, let's say, and it's a small concert hall and there's a lot of curtains and carpeting and thick padded seats, then I'm not sure what I would do. I might tune them up a little tighter so that they project since a lot of tones will be getting swallowed up by all of the uh, material. So that's just a, a little side note, but I thought it's worth mentioning. But for right now, this sounds pretty good. So I'm gonna grab my Speed King. I'm still waiting on the new Speed King from Ludwig that I ordered back in March, I think. Apparently, uh, there's a lot of delays with getting those out because of COVID. And, um, hopefully, I get that soon, though. So, I'm just going to 
give this its first couple gentle wallops because if I lay into this thing right now, it's going to overload the camera mic and I don't have my close mics in place yet. Once I get it all set up though, I will um, set up the close mics and then uh, do a little playing on them once everything's completely tuned up and set up after this. So let's hear this thing. Oh, I like that. It's a little dry sounding right now. I might lower the pitch, um, but I really like the sound. It's got a really nice attack and, and tone. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Sorry if that's very loud on the recording. I'll try to bring those spikes down in the post-production. Okay, so um, that's basically where I like it. I mean, I'll make some fine adjustments. I might loosen the front a little bit now. These bottom two here. Just a touch. I just backed off maybe like a quarter to a half turn on each one. Oh yeah, that's really nice. I love the fast response. Okay, so I'm going to put the Tom Tom into place best I can. Uh, for now, I have a, a kind of like a new old stock rail consulate that I'm going to mount on the bass drum soon. I'll drill the holes and do it myself, which is what I did on the thermal gloss and also on the 24-inch uh, gold sparkle. So I have some confidence that I can do that without screwing it up. Um, but for now, I'm just using an old Ludwig snare drum stand. Now this is probably going to go a lot quicker. And just to say that I don't spend a whole lot of time tuning. I mean, I really don't. I don't, and I know there's a lot of people who are fans of using tuning, um, you know, mechanisms like uh, drum dials and so forth. But that, that's never appealed to me. I don't feel like it's necessary at all for me. I don't knock anyone who, who likes to use that. I think it's pretty cool, actually. You know, it's just a different aspect of uh, the experience of tuning up your drums and what you love about drumming. I mean, I can see where some people would really like the uh, kind of mathematical or almost scientific aspect of that. Personally, I just like to tune them up to where they feel and sound good. And then I make the adjustments at the gig or wherever I'm playing and as I'm playing. Now this is already a little on the tight-ish side, so I'm just going to kind of go by feel and get it up to where I think it's fairly even all around. sounds good to me. I might go a little tighter with it. Um, you know, let me turn these snares off. They're buzzing. Okay. There's a wrinkle in here. Somewhere in here. There's a culprit. It always makes me nervous a little bit when I have a new head and I hear a wrinkle when I think I shouldn't because it it makes me think the head is defective like the collar is out of alignment okay, so now I'm going up up and up I'm gonna crank this actually so I often do this with new heads I just go way up tune it up in that bebop drummer Max Roach kind of range just crank it to stretch the collar real good and then push on it a couple times and then I'll back it down. That's typically what I do with new heads. Okay, 
that's way up there. Push on it a little. Now take it down. And the picture is worth a thousand words, so you can just watch as I do this. I really think that's a big part of getting your own sound, is figuring out your own way. Like not being too um, analytical about it and saying, oh, did you just turn one and one third turns on this one? Like, just, you, you have to explore what works and what sounds good to your ear. But I hope that some of what I'm saying is a good enough guide to achieve that. Now I'm going to go down and see if there's any hint of a wrinkle sound. There is a little bit. Okay. Bring this up a little. Now these are all very fine turns, tightening, feeling the resistance, and then I'll... I'll check the other side. Just go slightly tighter here, ever so slightly. Come back just a little bit now. Let's see how this sounds in place above the bass drum. Sorry again for the um, peaking levels there. Try to bring those down when I do the audio. Now I'm just going to back this down just a little bit and I do wonder, to be honest, if this head is a little out of shape. Now that tone is nice, I like that. Now, um, that's great. Really nice, clear, there's a nice brightness to this drum too. Um, let's move on to the 16. And this one, same thing, just going to kind of go high first and then maybe back it down. This one is not tuned as evenly out of the factory. It was almost loose wrinkled here and fairly tighter there, so I'm just going to even it up a bit. to work on the top. See, that already sounds pretty good. This one was tuned kind of close at the factory, just that other side. Yeah, that sounds great. Another thing with new heads is, of course, they are much brighter, and I prefer worn-in heads. If you guys who follow my channel know, you notice I've got pretty old heads on the thermal gloss kit, 
And I just like when heads get worn in and have that kind of softness in the middle where you can really feel the stick go into the drum. So I just really prefer having older heads, heads that have been worn in, like an old pair of shoes or a pair of gloves. Oh yeah, that's thunderous. I'm going to try not to hit them so hard while I'm tuning so it doesn't overload the camera mic. I don't necessarily listen for every pitch to be the same. What I listen for is a kind of like a, um, a harmony of overtones that's pleasing, you know, that's not clashing and doesn't set off the other drums too much. So that's why I kind of fidget with it in these fine little grades of slightly looser, slightly tighter. Because I'm looking for a really nice, pure tone that has overtones but it doesn't go bong, yang, you know, like you have uh, an overtone that just really clashes. And you know when that happens, you can hear it. And of course you can control that with muffling, but that's another sound as well. I mean, that's a whole other concept of tuning and, and uh, sound, muffling. And I'm not against that either. I think muffled drums sound great. These drums have the baseball bat type uh, tone control mufflers, but they actually go in stages. There's like three stages, I think. There's like heart barely on, more on, and then full on. But even with it full on, it has a lot of tone. I'll put this one fully on. And that still sounds good to me, and there's still ring. So it's by no means, um, you know, like putting something on the head, like a towel or uh, a control ring or anything like that. And I, I do tend to tune in a perfect fourth between the tom and the floor tom. It just kind of happens naturally. I don't, I don't aim for notes, but... See, that's, that's about a perfect fourth. Bum, bum. Okay, nice. I like where the 16 is at now. I'll get the 18 set up. Do the bottom head first. Maybe I'll put it up on here if you can see it better. Not sure. But hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Getting it tight. Well, let's see where I'm at. I think that's good. That might be a little tighter than I'll want to have it in the end, but let's see what the top side sounds like. Oh, yeah. That needs to be tuned. And actually, to keep the 16 from ringing, I'm going to put a little something on top of it. I need a towel. Hang on. Okay, a hat will do. Crank this one up too. Stretch the collar. And then back it down. 
snap, crackle, pop. listen to it. Now between these two the pitches are generally like a minor third I think. So I'm going to bring this down even more because I really like there to be a difference in the tone between the 16 and the 18. Listen to these two, I feel like it's a little bit more of a major third, so I'm just going to go up a little bit with the tom. checking the, the feel of all of these tension rods now. You know, to be perfectly honest, I'm thinking I might change this, this head on the 14 because it, it sounds to me like there's something a little funny in the collar here. Like I shouldn't have to tighten it up much in this area to get that that sound that little bit of a wrinkle sound out so for now I'm going to uh, leave it as is I'm tuning down some of these while I leave this where it is because I feel like there's some unevenness in this area and that's what I mean by like a lot of it is of course it's sound and you have to really listen to the tone all around the drum, but there is a there's a feel aspect too. That sounds nice. Okay, so I am going to take a pause and get the recording um, set up, get the mic set up and everything, and I'll be right back. Okay, so everything's set and ready to rock, and I just realized that I forgot one little important detail for the bass drum, moleskin. I like to put a moleskin patch where the beater contacts the head, so I'm going to do that now. And that's that. Personally, I don't care much for um, those phalam pads or whatever else is out there. I don't really like the, the feel. They all feel a little bit too, too hard to me. I like the traditional vibe of the moleskin. So I'm going to turn the uh, mics on and do a little quick bit of recording here. And these drums sound kick-ass right now.
So I tuned the tom down just a little bit more and the floor toms a little bit more and I really love where they're at right now. Maple, poplar, maple, three ply shell.
See, and the head's already loosening up a little bit from battering them. So with brand new heads, that's going to happen. I still might change this Tom head and see if I can... It sounds great right now. Thing I almost forgot. So the snare that I'm using, uh, you, may, you may notice if you can see it, I'll take it out of here. This is a snare that Terry sold me, which he called the Black It was his custom job. So he took a six and a half, um, sort of a 402, but it's a black enamel glitter finish which uh, I guess they call Black or Light or Black Galaxy, which is kind of odd because Black Galaxy is also the finish that I originally wanted for this kit, which is like a multicolored sparkle. At any rate, I think they call this Black Galaxy, and Terry put this same type badge on a couple, couple, two, three years ago, and it just so happens it matches this kit pretty well, I think. What do you think? Huh? How about that? I mean, from far, you know, I was looking at it from across the room, and I was like, oh, it sparkles a lot like the uh, black glass glitter does, even though it's a, sort of a sparkle enamel finish. And this is a 6.5-14, basically a superphonic, but not chrome-plated. It has the uh, imperial lugs. I have a 42-strand wire on there. There's a muffler in there. So, you know, I really like the sound of this drum, and I thought this would be a nice mate for this kit, at least some of the time. Of course, I'm still going to use my uh, 602, uh, my uh, 60s era Superphonics. Well, the, the one Superphonic is a 60s, and the uh, chrome over brass is 70. But I like this drum a lot. It has a slightly, well, just a different tone than the classic Superphonic. I think that the enamel coating makes for a little bit of a, a little bit of a drier tone, I think. tuned up, set up, ready to go. Um, I'm going to be making some videos with PFOZ soon. And as I said, the next one that's in line is four sticks. So hopefully we'll be able to get that out by the end of January. And uh, I plan to do some recording after, probably after New Year's. So <clears throat> as you can hear, I'm out of shape. And this past year without playing like three to five nights a week, three hours a night, it definitely takes a toll, but I'm trying to at least keep my hands in shape, but, you know, keeping your hands in shape is one thing, and actually playing gigs and being, uh, you know, reactive to the music that's around you, that's a whole other thing, so I feel like some of that has gotten, suffered from a bit of atrophy, so I'm looking forward to getting back to playing with actual musicians again soon, and uh, for now, I'm just going to beat on these babies. They're, they're beautiful. They're beautiful in all ways. They look great and they sound fantastic. Now I feel like I'm starting to get into even just playing them for 10 minutes. This is the first playing I'm doing on these drums and I can hear the qualities that I really want to kind of, um, you know, work within. The, there's, a bit of, there's a bit more brightness than the thermo kit, which I really like, 
So you know, kind of, you kind of hear different things uh, when the with with the tone of each each drum, and these drums have a really nice um, I don't know what I would call it like a frequency range. You know, they're they're a bit bright on the top end, but they have a lot of low thunder too. I just think that the shell construction is so great that it allows for that um, kind of range of tonality. And uh, yeah, the only minor issue that I'm sensing is this head. I'm not convinced about the head. I mean, I'm hoping it's not a problem with the edge of the drum. God forbid that. But um, I, I really don't think it's that. I think it, it, it just may be the head is a little janky. So I'll put another head. Maybe I've got a 14-inch ambassador and an emperor, actually, a vintage emperor. And I might swap that out. So uh, once again, hope everyone is staying uh, healthy throughout all of this madness. And I hope you all had a great holiday, and um, it's not over yet. So Happy New Year in advance to everyone. Um, this kid kind of has like a New Year's vibe to it, I guess, black glitter. So Happy New Year's, everyone, and looking forward to more videos coming up in 2021. Thanks again, as always, for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And also please subscribe to People's Front of Zeppelin and check out what we're doing. Oh, yeah, and we've got merch. T-shirts are available, men's and women's sizes. Uh, I believe small up through double XL. So hopefully you dig that and uh, just send me a message. Actually, you could send an email to peoplesfrontofzeppelin at gmail.com. That's, that's our email address. So, uh, once again, thank you. Thank you very much for all the support. I'm getting close to 10,000 subscribers, which is exciting. And uh, nothing right now is more exciting than having these drums set up and, and playing them and exploring all the different sounds. So, I'm very thrilled to, uh, to have this kit. Thanks once again, and see you soon. Stay well.